Hey guys. Well, we're back working on our Precision Matthew 727M. Uh, when I left off, I was in the middle of the wiring. I apologize, but I had to kind of put this aside to work on some other projects that I had going on. Uh, that's just the way it goes for me. Uh, it did give me the opportunity to get in some parts that I was needing for the enclosure. So I think I have everything now so we can move forward. Uh, one of the items that I had to change was the C1 contact. The relay, the ice cube relay. I only had a relay that had uh, two contacts and I need three. So I had to order a different relay, but as you can see we have uh, a set of contacts going to our 5 volt power supply, one going to our 48 volt transformer, and also one set of contacts that is our holding circuit that keeps everything energized once you let go of the momentary push button start. I had to order a, my start button which came in or my power on button and I also changed out my e-stop. I didn't like the one I had and so I ordered a different one. Uh, it has the same type contacts as the start button. The start button of course is normally open and the e-stop is normally closed. Uh, you will need two sets of normally closed contacts on the e-stop. Uh, one will go to our a set of contacts for this circuit and another set will go to our uh, C11GS breakout board for the Mach 3 to get the signal that the e-stop has been pressed. Uh, can you use normally open and normally closed contacts? You can. You However, Common practice is to use normally closed contacts on your e-stop and that way you have a continuous signal going to the components to let you know that no e-stop has been pushed and you don't have any uh, stray voltages causing any kind of issues. So go with normally closed contacts on your e-stop. I've got everything wired on my front panel now. I've got my rocker switches, the e-stop, the spindle switch and my power on button. Uh, if these buttons look familiar it's because they're the exact same buttons that are on the G0602. I uh, found them on eBay, ordered them and that way everything kind of looks the same. I also my 90 degree uh, liquid tight cable connectors came in uh, these will go on to the top of my enclosure. I had originally planned to use aviation plugs, but because of the space limitations I'm going to have from the top of my enclosure to the bottom of my coolant tray, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, permanently mount them with these uh, 90 degree liquid tight connectors. I also took the opportunity to place uh, two of these into my the back of my control box and these are kind of strategic if you can look here you can see that there's a, a pretty, bit, pretty good bit of space right here and so that's where the big cable will come in and then the small cable will come in right here like so all right so that takes care of that now I had individuals ask me about the fuses, these three fuses in particular. Uh, the fuse holders are a couple of bucks and then the actual fuses are a couple of bucks and you can pick up uh, just a circuit breaker for about the same price and then you don't have to worry about if you blow a fuse. Is that okay to do that? Uh, yeah, yeah it's fine if you put want to put a circuit breaker. Uh, I did use a circuit breaker on my G0602 project and that's fine. The only thing that I would caution is a lot of times 
fuses are used because especially with electronics and boards and that type of thing uh, if you blow a fuse there's a reason you blew a fuse and there's if you trip a breaker there's the there's there's definitely a reason that you tripped a breaker uh, you need to find out what that reason is before you reset it with circuit breakers it's just real easy to go ahead and just reset it and then see what happens with fuses you have to replace the fuse and that gives you a little time to think and figure out what blew the fuse uh, with circuit boards if you reset the breaker and you blow the board then it's a lot more expensive than it is uh, popping a fuse so I would caution you with using the breakers now I did order some breakers and so I'll probably go ahead and install these in my cabinet and that'll just give you a different option I've got to install my C1 contactor anyway so I'll go ahead and do that so now let's pull the enclosure out and then we'll replace the circuit breakers and also the C1 contactor and then I'll kind of show you the difference with the wire numbers on the C1 contactor so all I want to do first is I just want to remove C2 contactor and get it out of the way so I can get uh, over to the C1 contactor and change that out so I'll loosen up this screw and remove this wire and then on the bottom of the contacts they have these little pulls they're spring loaded and so what you do is you just pull them down like so and that will allow you to lift it up off the den rail and then slide it out okay and I'll just move that over to the side and then now we have our C1 contactor and here is our new one and as you can see we have three sets of terminals instead of the two sets alright so the numbers are a little different but basically what we have is our coil are these two wires and then power coming in is 789 and power going out is 4, 5, and 6 and then 1, 2, and 3 are normally closed side of the contacts and these are normally open so we'll be connecting to 4, 5, and 6 so all I want to do is just transfer these wires from here over to here now this is our power coming in and remember we installed a jumper and so we need to also have a jumper over here so that these terminals all have power okay we'll just do that right there for now and then this is the wire coming from our fuse and it will go in right here Okay, our C1 contactor is popped down in position. We have our jumpers over. That's good to go. It's not going to go anywhere. Now we have our two wires. Now these two wires are from the other side of the set of contacts. If you remember in the last video this is pin 8 that went to our tri power power supply and then 5 that went to our 48 volt power supply and so we'll just move transfer these over to our new relay and 5 will now go on 4 and 8 will now go on 5 Make sure that you download the latest wiring diagram. It'll have all the changes uh, that I've made. 
Okay, so now we've replaced our contactor, our cube relay C1, with our bigger one. Now we have three sets of contacts, and we have this extra set now that will go to our holding circuit. Okay, so now let's change our fuses and put in our go ahead and put this back into the spot okay good to go now for the fuses you can keep fuses if you already have them it's not a big deal uh, but for those of you that asked I went ahead and just purchased some of these breakers uh, and I've labeled them this is one fuse one And so let's go ahead and just, uh, we'll just swap these out. Get this one out of the way. It's the easiest. There's nothing connected to fuse three yet. This is our one amp fuse, and this is for a control circuit. That's what we'll be wiring up in the next video. Okay. And we will replace it with breaker 3 and it's a 1 amp breaker C1 up is on alright let me get fuse 1 here This is our 20 amp breaker, fuse one. And here's our breaker one, 20 amp. Get this tightened up. All right, this is our jumper that goes up top. Brings power to all these breakers. I went and used these originally because I already had these. So, but the breakers are cheap and you can, they work just as good. You just have to be careful, like I said, with not just resetting them for, you gotta make sure you know why they tripped. Okay, so this is fuse six. This is a 10 amp breaker or fuse and we're replacing it with six with a 10 amp. Okay, we have our three breakers in. And then, this is our wire power coming in that feeds them from the fuse. Wire number 91, you'll recall. And it's got to get jumped over to each one of them. Let me do that. It's our 110 volts coming into the breakers. Okay, now that we've had that retrofitted, uh, we can move on with the wiring. Check this with a meter, just to make sure. All right. Okay. All right, the breakers are working. And we've got power over here. And do we have power through? Nope. And that's our normally closed contacts. 
Okay, so now we've got our panel retrofitted with our new C1 contactor and circuit braiders instead of our fuses. Now for those of you that have the fuse, they're these, um, I believe they're 10 by 38 millimeter fuses. Uh, the uh, Chinese variety. I had these fuses laying around. Uh, but they're KTK R8 type fuses. This is a Limitron. But if you want to go with, like I said, go with the circuit breakers, they're not, pro not a problem using the circuit breakers. Okay, I also got our jumper in down here that came in to jump our grounds. And uh, now we can move forward. So in the next video, we're going to start wiring up our control panel. Thanks for watching the video. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thumbs up if you like the video. And most importantly, be safe.